Hi friends, welcome back to my training series. I hope you're well and hanging in there. Uh, this is the week 11 of my training vlog where I've been documenting and sharing my training as I prepare for the Cocodona 250 in May. And this week went by really fast for me. It must have been a good week. So let's get into the training. As usual for my schedule, Monday was a rest day, so I didn't really get started with things until Tuesday. On Tuesday, I was assigned 80 minutes where after a 30 minute warm up, I ran five sets of 30 seconds hard and then 90 seconds easy. And then 10 minutes of easy running again before I did again, five times 30 seconds hard and 90 seconds easy. All in all, it was a great run. And then when I got home, I did my core strength routine. And then after work, I did yoga via Zoom. On Wednesday, I was assigned 75 minutes of easy running. And I went back to the same trails I ran the day before. It was a good chill run that just felt good. On Thursday, I was assigned 70 to 90 minutes of steady state running, which my coach describes as marathon pace. So I warmed up for 25 minutes and then ran at a good strong pace for 30 minutes with a couple short breaks, but mostly I did a good job with this workout and it felt great in the end. On Friday, I was assigned 45 to 60 minutes of really easy running. So I ran 50 minutes on the treadmill, incline set to three, a really easy run, and just watched some YouTube. On Saturday, I was assigned a rest day. A little bit unusual for my schedule, but I'm getting ready for a 50 miler next week. And so that run is gonna be on Friday and that's kind of altered this week as I get ready for that. So I spent the day working on some house projects. It felt really good to have a day off. Finally, on Sunday, I was assigned two hours with some vert. At Lord Hill Regional Park, where I do a lot of my training, there's a really steep hill called O Lordy Hill. So I ran there and did repeats of that climb six times. All right. Round and round. Round and round. I gotta give you something. Oh, okay. It just said that the Irish penny is the luckiest object on earth. Okay. Well, that's, that's special. Thank you for that. Huh. Good way to remember today. Let's stick to a magnet too. Happy St. Patrick's Day. All right, take care. Okay. I got in a total of 8.1 miles with 1,900 feet of gain. So as I get ready for next week's 50 miler, this week was actually a little bit of a lighter week for me. I ended up with 30.7 miles total and a total running time of six hours and 45 minutes. Okay, yeah, it was a great week. Went by quickly uh, and several people sent in some questions. So thank you to everyone who sent them in. I've talked about how at Cocodona, I plan to carry five liters in the first section. So Philip asks, how frequently will I train with a five liter pack? I will probably only carry the full five liters just once, maybe twice. Uh, but my plan is that on training runs where I'm using a pack, between now and Cocodona, I'm gonna be carrying my required gear and maybe some extra water just for some extra weight. I just wanna get completely comfortable and used to having a full pack on my back. Uh, during next week's 50 miler, I plan to carry at least four liters of water just so I can get that much weight on, on my back for, for a long days out. And then uh, next, uh, next month, I'm running a 50 kilometer race. And for that one, I do plan to carry five liters from the start. So there might be one or two more training runs in there where I'll, I will make sure I've got everything dialed in to carry five liters but I'm not going to do it too much. I do think it is important though that we practice everything, including you know, is all the stuff we're going to be carrying and the weight so that on race day we're used to it. So I do plan to be doing some practicing of this stuff and I think it'll be helpful in the end. Okay, Brad asks, what is my ideal pack size for a 200? 
Now, this is a highly personal thing. Uh, I'm sure everyone's going to have a different answer and people will disagree with me on what I say. It depends a lot on the amount of gear and the amount of water you're going to be carrying. Different races have different gear requirements, so it's all going to depend. Uh, so I'll kind of give you a little bit of what I've used and what I like and what I think the optimal thing would be. You know, in my first 200 miler in the Moab 240 in 2019, I used a 15 liter Osprey pack called a Duro. Uh, and I generally liked the pack quite a bit. And I think most of the time I was able to carry all the required gear that I needed for the race. There was one time I remember leaving an aid station when I had the, all my required gear plus a whole lot of water and it was still a little bit tight to fit everything into that pack. But I generally liked that 15 liter capacity. Um, since that run though, since that original Moab, I have been mostly running in a 14 liter Zygos pack from Ultraspire. Uh, a couple of times though, I've added a waste pack to add a little bit more storage because for me, I find that the Zygos is just a little bit too small. I always wish it was just a little bit bigger. So sometimes I add that waste pack just to give me a little bit more storage capacity. I don't use the Solomon 12 liter advanced skin pack, but I think it's the most popular one out there. You'll see at 200s, most people carrying and wearing the Solomon 12 liter advanced skin pack. Um, I think theoretically it has a smaller uh, capacity than the 14 liter Zygos, but man, people stuff so much stuff into the Solomon. I think that because it has really stretchy fabric. So I think even though it theoretically carries less, I think people can get more into that pack. So it's a great pack. I just don't like the way that you have to store poles with it because it doesn't have a great built-in way to store trekking poles and they sell a quiver that you can store them in, but it's just that's just not the way I like to go. So I really prefer the Ultra Spire packs and the way that Ultra Spire has uh, some pole storage kind of on the underside of the pack. Um, there, I have seen quite a few runners use the Epic XT pack from Ultra Spire, and I've also used it during a couple of uh, the first day of Cocodona. So Cocodona 2021 and 2023, when I was carrying five liters of water, I wore the Epic XT pack. It has a 30 liter capacity, which I think is actually too much to be quite honest. And so I don't like wearing that pack um, if I don't have to. So I wish that, I think the perfect pack would end up being something between the 14 liter Zygos and the 30 liter Epic XT. I have this fantasy of something between uh, maybe 16 and 20 liters. It's all based on the Zygos, has a lot of upfront storage so you can always access things while you're on the go. Um, and so I think that would be great for the middle of the pack and back of the pack runners who are maybe carrying a little bit more gear or maybe not quite as lightweight gear as, as the elites in the front. Um, but I haven't, I haven't seen that pack yet. I keep, I keep advocating for it. Um, but yeah, those are those are my thoughts on it. At Cor Coca Dona this year, I probably will be running again in the Ultra Spire Zygos. I run in the version four pack. It's been a real good workhorse for me over the years, and uh, hopefully, I'll be able to get all the required gear and the water needed into that. I still am going to see if I'm going to end up in the Epic XT for the first day with all the big water requirements. But I think in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be testing out to see if I can get five liters of water easily into the Zygos. So anyway, that's my thoughts about the, the packs. A lot of information there. Uh, let me know what you think the best pack for a 200 is. I'd be curious to know what other people's opinions on this one is. Okay, Mateo asks me about injuries that I've had in the past and refers to an injury that uh, I, I guess people learned about a couple of years ago. You know, my biggest injury was at the beginning of 2016 when I injured an ankle during a 50K run on pavement, wearing very minimal shoes. This was part of my uh, learning as you do early on in my running uh, career. I was making a bunch of mistakes because I just didn't know what I was doing. And I ended up injuring an ankle. It took me out for several weeks uh, with a lot of sports therapy to start to rehab the ankle. Uh, and it wasn't until like a year and a half later that I actually ran an ultra again. So that, that was a, a significant injury. And for years, I felt something not quite right in that ankle as it continued to heal. Uh, it was not necessarily uh, hurting me as it, as it continued to feel, but I always felt that, that ankle. And I'm, but I'm so happy now that 
years later I can run and that ankle doesn't bother me at all. I'm completely un unaware of that injury having happened. And then after the inaugural Cocodona in 2021, I had quite a big painful blister underneath my right foot um, and it hurt really bad. And I was pretty ambitious thinking that a month after Cocodona, I was going to be able to run the Scout Mountain 100. And that's where I ended up DNFing because my foot wasn't quite ready and it hurt so bad. Um, yeah, I just wasn't quite ready. Since then, I've recovered a lot more quickly after my 200 events. Uh, and so, you know, I, I feel more confident that I, I could do a 100 miler a month after a 200 miler under the right conditions and with the right recovery. So um, I'm just really grateful that that ankle that I injured in 2016 has mended and that I feel completely normal and don't even think about it anymore. All right, Becky asks about hot yoga. Uh, you know, actually I did do hot yoga last year in, that, in my run up towards Cocodona and I'd completely forgotten about it. So uh, thank you for reminding me. I think I might look at the schedule to see if I could figure out how to get in and do hot yoga uh, once a week in addition to the yoga that I'm already doing. Um, yeah, that's a great way to sort of get the heat in as well as the stretching. So. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot for the suggestion. I'm going to try to get that into the schedule. All right, here's a couple questions about crew. You know, my fiance Leah has crewed me for most of my races since my first 50 miler in 2017. Um, sometimes her sister has joined her on the crew, and a couple of times my daughter has joined her on the crew, and my parents have also joined on the crew. But I pretty much always have Leah on the crew. I'm so lucky to have her with me at these events. And we I'm not sure anybody really trained anybody. We've just sort of figured it out as we've gone. Um, in Because in addition to her caring for me, you know, she also needs to care for herself, which I think is maybe the, one of the biggest things we've learned through all this is that it's really exhausting to be on the crew and that the crew needs to take care of themselves. So I know that one thing that Leah has told me is that she's learned that if I lay down and take a nap, she'll also lay down and take a nap too. And so that way she's getting rest, uh, but she'll also get rest in at aid stations before I arrive. Um, but uh, it's, it's worked out really well for us to just always be together. You know, if, if there are people out there who have separate crews for different events, um, that might work well for, for those people. Uh, I've been really lucky to have such a supportive partner and such supportive family. So for me, it's been generally Leah and maybe some other family members with us. Uh, a lot of runners don't use crew, but um, I really like having Leah at the big races because seeing her at aid stations is a huge emotional boost. It's really great to be out there on the, on the trail and be suffering through everything and just be like, oh my God, I can't wait to see Leah at the next aid station. So yeah, really love having her there. And then lastly, a question about juggling training and family time and other life commitments. I know this is a really big issue for ultra runners. Uh, to train for an ultra takes a lot of time. I mean... Obviously, an ultra takes a lot of time, but that's just that's just the celebration of months and months of training. The hard work is in all those long training runs on the weekend and maybe even back to backs in the weekend and the weekday training runs. And when you have a job in a family, it's really tough to juggle it all. Uh, you know, I can remember when I was training for my first 50 miler at the time, my daughter was 14 and I really wanted to give her as much time and attention as I possibly could. So I would wake up really early, like I would wake up at three o'clock in the morning, for example, on a Saturday, make sure I was out of the house by four, get my long run done, and I was off and back to the apartment before my daughter woke up. And so that way we had the rest of the day together and you know she could get all my love and attention. And yeah, I still got my training run in the morning. Of course, it just means that maybe I go to bed earlier if I can at night, uh, certainly certainly get less sleep than, than optimal, but... Um, to me, it was extremely valuable to invest in that. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm super lucky that today, uh, you know, I've got a really really supportive partner in Leah, and she understands, the, you know, my weekend training schedule. But I also try to make sure that I can give her the time that that I want to give her, and so I still try to get up really early on the weekends to get started on my run, so that I can get back and be ready for some part of the weekend to spend with her. Uh, I don't always love it when a day gets totally killed because of training. So it's definitely a juggling act, um, but you know I think I think it's worth it if we can make it happen. Okay, well, thank you all so much for your questions this week. 
Uh, if you have any other questions that I can answer for you, please put them in the comments below. Uh, if you have any thoughts about your uh, best pack for a 200, I'd love to hear what you think. Comments below. Uh, and then thank you so much to all the channel members for your extra support of the channel. I really appreciate all so much. You know, for a small monthly subscription, channel members get access to exclusive content and, uh, and the extra funds help offset some of the costs of running the events that I document here on the channel. So thank you to everyone for being a member. I appreciate it. Uh, so that's it for this week. Thank you all for watching. Uh, please make sure you hit that like button. If you're not subscribed already, please do subscribe. And I hope you have a really great week. I'll see you next week. Take care.